السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم in the name of Allah سبحانه وتعالى most gracious most merciful الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين we praise Allah سبحانه وتعالى we send blessings and salutations upon Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم we ask Allah سبحانه وتعالى to bless his household companions. May Allah bless every one of you. May Allah bless us all. My brothers, my sisters in Islam, I will be failing in my duty if I do not say the following. So let's listen attentively. I saw a message yesterday. It was a WhatsApp message. And I felt that I needed to just make a slight correction to say, when we have someone who comes to remind us of the deen, number one, it is Allah who guides. Remember that. Number one, it is Allah who guides. Yes, there might be someone who encouraged you. He will get a reward for it. You may want to obviously uh, seek ways of getting closeness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Sometimes there is a person who tapped you on your shoulders. There is someone who might have asked you what to do. Remember, there is a limit to which you can actually praise that person. Remember that. When it comes to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, it goes well beyond because he was the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We would be insulting ourself, ourselves if we did not say sallallahu alayhi wa sallam because we would be cursed. So therefore with Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, you can send blessings and salutations throughout the day and the night and you would only be getting a reward. But remember when there is a scholar coming or a student of knowledge such as myself, for example, may Allah even give us that little status. Let's not go beyond the limits when it comes to praising a person or saying one of the top guys in the world, etc. No, it is not. I am a brother of yours. It's only my duty to let you know this. That's why I'm telling you. I'm just a human being. I'm actually related to perhaps quite a lot of you, more than those who may know. Because I'm sure you have one of your forefathers by the name of Adam, alayhi salam, don't you? May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless you all. My brothers and sisters, I feel the warmth, as cold as it may be in this beautiful masjid. The warmth in the faces and the hearts and the smiles of the brothers who are seated here. May Allah accept it from us. I want to remind myself of a hadith of Shaddad ibn Aws radiallahu anhu today. Hadith of Shaddad ibn Aws radiallahu anhu is just one hadith that I will talk about today because I believe it has helped me a lot and it will help us a lot. Many of us have many problems. That's part of life. If life has challenges every day, one struggle, if it's not with your children, it's with your health, not with your health, it's with your wealth, not with your wealth, it's with someone else's health, not, not with that, it's with the loss of life of someone, not with that, it is something else, etc. It just goes on and on and on. So that is the nature of this life. If you think that it's going to stop completely, you don't know what this life is. It will stop at death. And this is what happens. Death is a gift of a believer because at that point he goes to a better place or she goes to a better place. And we have yaqeen and conviction in that regard. No matter who you are, no matter what you have done in the past, the past is exactly that past. We turn a new leaf, we seek Allah's forgiveness, we repent to Allah, we start afresh once again. Allah says, you know what? I will forgive you. Come to the door, I will forgive you. You knock the door of tawbah. You knock the door of repentance and you knock the door of forgiveness. Knock the door and knock it often. I tell you why. Nuh alayhi salatu wasalam, amongst many other messengers, including Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam, told their, the followers, that I have a message for you from Allah and that is seek the forgiveness of Allah. It will open so many doors for you. What doors will it open for you? It will open the doors of the mercy of Allah, the forgiveness of Allah. 
the sustenance that you are searching for, the health that you are looking for, the happiness you are looking for, the barakah in your life and in your sustenance that you are looking for, the smile that you will have when you see the children that you have been blessed with because they will become the coolness of your eyes through your istighfar, through your seeking of forgiveness of Allah. So you don't know, some people have told me, you taught us say istighfar, but I did not sin today. Why should I do it? So I tell them the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam used to seek forgiveness up to a hundred times a day. He never ever needed it. He did not need a thing. He was, as we know, without sin. Subhanallah. He was the messenger of Allah, afdalul khalqi wa akramul rusuli. He was the best of the the creation and the most noble of all prophets. Sallallahu alayhi wasallam. He did not need it, but he did it. And that caused an even higher or even greater elevation in his status. Subhanallah rabbil alameen. So my brothers and sisters, remember something. You have a problem, make amends regarding your relationship with Allah. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's what will help you. People have a problem. They run to this one, that one, etc, etc. The first thing that should happen, turn to Allah. When Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was overcome by certain things, something happened, etc. Fazi'a ila salah. The first thing he did, he made haste towards salah. And he rushed towards praying. He went down in sujood for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That was the first thing he did. And then he called out to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that's when a lot happened and things started changing. And Allah promises you contentment. Contentment means if your feet are amputated, your leg is amputated, you lose your eyesight, you're diagnosed with cancer, you're dying of something, you will never lose your contentment. You may not have the things of this world, but you are a happy man, a happy woman, always praising Allah, always thanking Him. We all have problems. Nobody is free of it. So Allah promises you contentment, but Allah does not promise that you will have wealth and you will have health. He can take that away as a gift for you. As a gift. Sometimes we turn away from Allah. He wants us to get close to Him because He loves us. So He gives us something we call a problem in our lives. Brother, why do I have this problem? So I ask Him, well, since you have the problem, how has your relationship been with Salah? Well, I started. What made you start? The problem. Thank you. Thank you. MashaAllah. Do you get the point? Your problem made you call out to Allah. Your problem brought you to the masjid. Your problem took you to Allah. So wasn't that a gift of Allah? Allah says, and you know what? After the problem, you passed away. So Allah says, I really loved you so much. Your life was going in one direction. I did something to you. It headed in the other direction. Then I took you away while your life was in the right direction. Allahu Akbar. What a gift of Allah. So what is this hadith of Shaddad ibn Aws? Radiyallahu anhu. He says there was something known as the best way of seeking forgiveness. Sayyidul istighfar. It is, it is certain words or certain phrases that are uttered that are considered the best way of seeking forgiveness from Allah. The beautiful way of, or the beautiful words. You know, Sayyid is a master. We say Sayyiduna Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He's our master in the sense that he came and taught us. And he came and sent by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala chosen sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. But when we say in the Arabic language, the term Sayyid is used even to refer to Mr. So-and-so. Sometimes they use the word Sayyid, fulan, fulan, you know, Mr. So-and-so. It's showing the respect to that particular person. When it comes to a phrase and you say Sayyidul Istighfar, it means it is possibly the highest of the terms of Istighfar that you can have. An yaqul al-abdu, for a worshipper to say. So if you're not an abd, there is no point in saying these words. You need to be a slave of Allah. You need to be a worshipper of Allah. How can someone call out to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when they don't worship Allah? When they are not believers in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So that's a, a beautiful point. That you must enslave yourself, surrender to Allah. Oh Allah, I am your slave. So these words as follows. Allahumma anta rabbi. Allahumma anta rabbi. I will be saying the words and I will translate them and explain them slowly but surely. And I told you that's the only hadith we are going to study this evening. But while I'm saying it, you may say these words within yourself or in a light voice on your own. 
So he starts off by explaining to us, Allahumma anta rabbi. Oh Allah, you are my Rabb. What is the, what is Rabb? Rabb means you made me. You created, you nourish, you cherish, you provide, you protect. Every aspect of my existence is in your hands. You can take me away now if you want. You are giving me, you are nurturing me. That is Rabbun. So Allahumma anta Rabbi. Oh Allah, you are my Rabb. This is istighfar. This is seeking forgiveness. I'm starting off by declaring, Oh Allah, you are my Rabb. Why? Because I need to know he is my boss. In our language, we say this man is my boss. What do you mean? You want to leave, you need his permission. You want to come back, you need his permission. You want your salary, you need to go to him, etc, etc. Okay? So Allah is even higher than that. Allah owns you and I. He owns you totally. Can you imagine you see someone and suddenly you go to the ground and put your head on the ground? No way. It cannot happen except for Allah. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. You put your head on the ground for who? For Allah. Because He is your supreme owner. He owns you. Wallahi, He owns you totally and completely. And myself too. This is why we get into prostration. أَقْرَبُ مَا يَكُونُ الْعَبْدُ لِرَبِّهِ وَهُوَ سَاجِدٌ The closest that a slave can get to his Rabb is in the condition of sujood. So it's amazing how we start off by saying, Allahumma anta Rabbi. Oh Allah, you are my Rabb. La ilaha illa anta. There is no one worthy of worship besides you. Why do we not say there is... In the translation, we normally say, لا معبود بحق إلا الله. There is no one worthy of worship besides Allah. No one really worthy of worship besides Allah. Because people are worshipping things besides Allah. There are gods besides Allah that are worshipped by others, but they are not worthy of worship besides the one who made you. Who is worthy of your worship? Whoever made you. Who is your maker? الرب Allahu, Rabbi, the one who made me, Allah, the one whom I'm going to return to. So I say, La ilaha illa anta. That's the second part. Allahumma anta Rabbi. Oh Allah, you are my Rabb. La ilaha illa anta. None is worthy of worship besides you. Khalaqtani. You know why? Because you created me. That's why. Did you hear that? Subhanallah. What am I doing? I'm starting off seeking forgiveness of Allah by declaring who exactly He is. By confirming, Oh Allah, I worship you. There is no one. You are my Rabb. No one worthy of worship besides you. You made me. Khalaqtani. Wa ana abduk. And as for me, I'm your slave. As for me, I'm at your command. What you've told me to do, I try my best to do. What you've prohibited, I stay away from. However, we continue. We say, "Wa ana abduk, wa ana ala wa'dika wa ahdika mastatatu." As best as I can, I am upon my promise. What is my promise? Let me tell you. The promise is La ilaha illallah Muhammadur Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. That's the promise. When you want to enter the fold of Islam, I'm sure all of you have seen people. What do they say? I'm becoming a Muslim. They don't say that. I declare my shahada. That's what they say. What does that mean? It's your promise. What's my promise? Ashhadu Allah ilaha illallah. I bear witness that there is none worthy of worship besides Allah. Therefore, I will worship none besides Allah. That's what it means. When you say Ashhadu Allah ilaha illallah, I bear witness there is none worthy of worship besides Allah. But you are worshiping everything besides Allah, then you have not fulfilled your promise. You are not upon the promise. Upon the promise, the first thing when you're entering the deen, when you want to be a Muslim, is to declare that you are indeed upon the worship of Allah alone. La ilaha illallah. It is such a powerful statement that that one statement is so heavy on the right side of the scale on the day of judgment that wallahi, it can result in your entry into Jannah standing on its own. La ilaha illallah Muhammadur Rasulullah. So we are saying, La ilaha illa anta. Khalaqtani wa ana abduk wa ana ala ahdika wa wa'dika mastata'atu. Oh Allah, as far as possible, I, I am on this promise. I declare that there is none worthy of worship besides you. And I bear witness that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is your messenger. That's what we say, don't we? What does that mean? That means he was sent by you to teach us what to do, what not to do. How to worship you and what not to do. 
So if you come up with something on your own, for example, you say this pork that is there, this bacon that is there, they repeated the Bismillah, Allahu Akbar 75 times. So now it's okay because a normal sheep, you say it once when it comes to a pig, you say it X amount of times. That's not true. You brought that from your pocket. That's what you did. You brought it from your pocket because no matter how many times you say Bismillah, Allahu Akbar, even if you say A'udhu Billah when slaughtering the pig, it doesn't make it halal. Remember that. Remember this. Why? Because Ashhadu Anna Muhammadan Abduhu wa Rasuluhu. Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam taught you something. He was sent by Allah to teach you halal, haram. He was sent by Allah to teach you how to worship him. So for example, here comes the time of salah. And I feel like a pious man. So I decide, you know what? Salat al-Maghrib today, I'm just going to make four units. My brother. It sounds nice. You added one extra unit because it's an act of worship. I'm facing the Qibla. I have wudu. I'm in salah. I'm reading Fatiha. I'm doing everything else. I went to sujood. I went to rukur. Guess what? The whole three plus that one all invalid because you just did it from your own pocket once again. But if you follow, it means you believe Ashhadu Anna Muhammad and Abduhu wa Rasulu. What did he say? That's what I want to do. How did he teach it? That's what I want to do. Then Alhamdulillah, you are ala wa'dika wa ahdika. You are on your promise and you are upon that allegiance that you have pledged unto Allah. Oh Allah, I won't worship anyone besides you and I will not consider as a Nabi anyone besides Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa the final Nabi. The others who have passed, we believe in them. Yes, indeed. But at the end of the day, we are the Ummah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the final Nabi of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the final messenger. So that's why I started off by telling you, be careful your relationship with people around you. If you raise them too high, when they make a mistake, you follow the mistake with them. But if you have understood, mashallah, the brother has helped us. The, and the brother, subhanallah, he is a respectable person. Alhamdulillah, he's a human being. He may have his faults, etc. At least you will be able to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and understand that it is Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam whom we are following. Subhanallah. Subhanallah. This is the what? All this I'm declaring because I want to seek Allah's forgiveness. Look at how we start. When I want to seek Allah's forgiveness, I start by saying who you are. Oh Allah, you are the one. And you are the greatest, you are my Rabb, you made me, no one worthy of worship besides you. As for me, I'm a slave of yours and I'm trying my best to be upon this particular pledge. And I'm trying my best to be upon the promise that I have declared. I seek your protection, O oh Allah, from all the bad that I've done. What do you mean? You mean you've done a lot of bad things. We declare. We are admitting it. Oh Allah, I've done bad. I seek your protection because sometimes the bad we do definitely has an impact on us. It has an impact on us, our family members, our children and others perhaps because we do bad. It affects your marriage. It affects everything. If you quit the bad, the good also affects everybody. If you turn to Allah, the goodness affects everybody. So you want a solution for the problems in your home? Turn to Allah, seek Allah's forgiveness, and you will find a lot of goodness, subhanAllah. It's something amazing, something unique, that you seek forgiveness with Allah, or of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and you find the condition at home starts improving. It starts becoming better. Your children become better. Alhamdulillah. I'm not saying just sit back and don't do anything about, about it. Your child is perhaps doing something wrong. You guide them in a beautiful way. What's the point of telling them to do something when you are doing the opposite? Are you instructing people to do good and you're forgetting yourselves? You're telling others to do something, you're forgetting yourself. That does not mean that you're not allowed to tell your children not to smoke when you're smoking. But it does mean become conscious of your deeds. Quit that cigarette. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make it easy. I was surprised this time I came to the UK. I must admit there are many more smokers than I thought. I've been to many countries and I am happy at the decrease of people who smoke. But I must say, maybe it's the winter, maybe it is something else. I've witnessed women puffing away like I've never seen before. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us ease. May Allah make it easy. It does not mean that others are smoking, so it's a good thing. <coughs> Quit the habit. Don't argue about, oh, makru haram, it's a bad habit. They cannot sell it to you without writing on the box, smoking kills. So please, quit it. 
May Allah make it easy for you. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide us all. I've seen sometimes, you know, when you're walking past and they see a man with a beard, a person with a cigarette puts it down, he hides it, he puts it behind him, he throws it and quickly presses it. Well, Allah is far higher and Allah is far greater and Allah is watching you in an even bigger way than anyone else who's passing by. So do it for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So going back to the istighfar, we said, I am on your promise and Everything bad I've done, I seek your protection. I seek refuge in you from that bad which I have done. Abu ulaka bi I admit to you all. I am actually admitting all the good that you have bestowed upon me. You favored me. I, we don't even deserve the air we're breathing sometimes. That's how we operate in life. Pornography all night, haram chats, haram link ups. Haram, can I say adultery? Haram, everything else. We alcoholics sometimes doing something without even thinking of Allah. No salah, no nothing. And Allah still gives you. Every week you're getting your money. Every other day you're getting your food. Every day you're getting your food basically. Every day you're breathing. Your health is okay. You're looking smarter. You're looking wise. You're looking wealthy. You're looking healthy, etc. Allah's giving us without us really deserving it. That is called Ghafoorur Rahim, Rahmanun Rahim, the most merciful, the most forgiving. More than that, He has mercy on us. That's why He gives us. He has mercy on us. If Allah did not have mercy, do you know what the Quran says? Walau yu'akhidullahu nasa bima kasabu. Or walau yu'akhidullahu nasa bidulmihim. If Allah had to punish people because of what they've earned with their, with their own hands, and if Allah had to punish people because of their oppression, there would be nothing remaining on earth. It would be destroyed, completely finished. Because that's the people's deeds. But Allah says, no, He gives you the opportunity to turn in a beautiful way to Him. May Allah grant us the turning. May Allah grant us the turning. My beloved brothers, my sisters, let me tell you. When we say, oh Allah, I admit, I'm not denying all the favors you have bestowed upon me. We then continue in the same Sayyidul Istighfar to say, Abu Ubi Dambi. Oh Allah, I am admitting my sin. All the sins I've committed, I don't deny them. I, I've admitted. I did this, I did that, I did that. You make a mental note of what you've done. You know what you've done. Especially the major sins. The major sins, you know. But there is hope. What is the hope? After that, we say, Faghfirli, so forgive me. That's where the istighfar comes in. You see the introduction? We started off one thing, another thing, a third thing, declare the greatness of Allah, declare how small we are, how insignificant we are, how dependent we are unto Allah, how we made a promise when we declared our shahada and we declared it all the time, how we are trying our best to tread upon that path of goodness. And at the same time, we admit, oh Allah, you have bestowed us with so much. We seek refuge in you from the evil of our own deeds. And we are admitting that we have done bad. And you know what? Like I said, you have a mental note of the bad you've done. And then you say, Faghfirli. أَبُوءُ لَكَ بِنِعْمَتِكَ عَلَيَّ وَأَبُوءُ بِذَنْبِي فَاغْفِرْ لِي So forgive me, O oh Allah. فَإِنَّهُ Why? فَإِنَّهُ لَا يَغْفِرُ الذُّنُوبَ إِلَّا أَنْتَ Forgive me because there is no one who forgives sins besides you, O oh Allah. Subhanallah. You are my Rabb. I have no other Rabb besides you. You are my Allah. You are my maker. I don't have another maker to go to. La Rabba Lana Siwaka Fayuda. We we do not have another Rabb besides you who would be called out. So we call out unto you. We are helpless. We only hope in your mercy, and we will never lose hope in your mercy. We know you are there. We know you love us. We know you will give us chance and another and a third. Parents give their children so many chances. Allah loves you and I more than any parent can ever love his or her child. And you go out and see what type of love there is for the children. That's a promise. So my brothers and sisters, don't lose hope in the mercy of Allah. I want to repeat this hadith of Shaddad ibn Aus, radiallahu an, wherein he says that the Sayyidul Istighfar taught by Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa to say, for a worshipper to say, Allahumma anta rabbi, la ilaha illa anta, khalaqtani, wa ana abduka, wa ana ala ahdika, wa wa'dika, 
ما استطعت أعوذ بك من كل شر ما صنعت أبوء لك بنعمتك علي وأبوء بذنبي فاغفر لي فإنه لا يغفر الذنوب إلا أنت And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgives your sins There are so many ways to seek forgiveness This is one of them it's, it's mentioned to be one of the most beautiful ways of asking Allah's forgiveness. And I want to end off by saying one thing. My brothers and sisters, a lot of the times we make some powerful du'as in the Arabic language, but we don't know their meanings. Did you hear what I said? A lot of the times we say adhkar, we sit and we rattle out so much. But we don't know the meaning. That's why I'm saying rattling. Rather than that, say it. Try and go into the meaning. See, it is powerful. You know, when the evening comes, we say, Am sayna wa amsal mulku lillahi rabbil alameen. What does it mean? Our children recite it. They don't have a clue sometimes. Sometimes we don't say that. Allahumma inni as'aluka khaira ma fi hadihi al-laylati wa khaira ma ba'daha wa a'udhu bika min sharri ma fi hadihi al-laylati wa min sharri ma ba'daha. What a powerful dua, O oh Allah. I seek. I ask you to give me the goodness, to give me the goodness of this particular night and all the nights that follow. And to save me from the evil of this particular night and all the nights that follow. That's a dua. Every evening you're, you're supposed to be reading it. And in the morning, you're asking Allah the same thing for the day. Oh Allah, I ask you the goodness of this day and I seek protection from the evil of this day and all the days that follow. Amazing. Imagine every day you're making that dua. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive our sins. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us ease in the dunya and the akhirah. Aqulu qawli hadha wa sallallahu wa sallam wa baraka ala nabina Muhammad. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.